hey guys welcome back to my channel i look like a banana whatever it's a look oh my gosh i'm so excited this is a video that i've been wanting to do for so long so if you have been following me for a while some of you guys might know that i tend to take 90 percent of my own photos and i edit all of my own photos i am a one-man team so recently I had a conversation with a young lady who's trying to get into content creation and she was asking me questions and asking me for tips on how to get into the industry. So when I told her that I take a lot of my own stuff, which makes a lot more financial sense to me, um, her number one question is she didn't think that it was physically possible to be able to do that and you have to have professional training. And I kept on trying to tell her that no you don't, which made me want to shoot this video even more. So. I was lucky enough to partner up with Samsung yay, to shoot this video for you guys. So the theme of this video and a few other videos that are coming to you guys very soon is do what you can't. You can 100% do what I do by yourself. I do it 100% by myself. The only thing that I decide to invest in is equipment. That was my investment. It's all about challenging yourself and doing things that you never thought was physically possible. And trust me, what I do is very possible. Whether you use a professional camera, whether you use a camera phone, whether you use a digital camera like what I'm using to vlog, it's very possible. So I wanna show you guys little tricks and hacks that I have picked up on how to take your own photos using nothing but your camera phone. So I will be using the Note nine um but all these tricks and hacks that i'm giving you guys can be used on anything whether you're using a digital camera if you're using an a7 a j7 an s7 s8 whatever you can use all these hacks the only difference is well there's actually a lot of differences from you know battery life and storage space that the note 9 has but also the note 9 has a pen remote meaning that i no longer have to do that old school thing where I have to take a photo with a self timer and every 10 seconds I pose and I have to run back, press, take a picture again, run back to my spot, 10 seconds, take a picture, pose. It's a lot easier now because now all I have to do is just keep pressing the little pen until I take as many photos as I want and until I get the perfect shot. So let's start by talking about the basics on how to take photos you sale. Um, the only thing that I do have to say that I think it's best to invest in when it comes to taking your own photos is a tripod. I have done it before where I don't use tripods, I use stuff around the house, whether it's books or I'll use like a shelf or use a vase like to balance the camera and stuff like that. But let me tell you, the tripod will save your life. It's gonna make life so much easier. So all these photos I took with the tripod just because I really genuinely do think that you need to invest in a tripod. And tripods go anywhere between 3,000 shillings to 20,000 depending on how heavy duty it is. And they're phones, so you really don't need much. And then, outside of that, sorry, this is a smaller tripod, but outside of that you need the phone clipper things to hold the phone onto the tripod. That's, those are the two things that I think that you have to invest in. Now let's just talk about the very simple basics on how to take photos by yourself with nobody else but you. Um, so I am using my phone right now. So I am, wait, let me get the screen recorder going. So right now I have opened my camera settings. So if you notice at the top, there is auto, live focus, slow-mo, pro, um, and then there's panorama. AR emoji and hyperlapse. So I'm just gonna talk about the basics. So let's just start with auto. Auto is very self-explanatory. It's just automatic. It's basically already been set up for you so you don't have to think too hard. Um, live focus, the best way for me to describe it is that it, it works like a 50 millimeter camera lens, um, which is my favorite lens of all times. That's the one that's always attached to my 5D. The way it works is that it finds the thing that you want to focus on, let's say it's a person, and then it focuses on that one person and blurs out everything behind them. And this is a very perfect example of how the light focus would work or how 50 millimeter works. Where me, I am in complete focus, but everything behind me is blurred out and 
it gives you a crisper photo especially if you're trying to do a portrait or something like that but now here's the thing I've noticed a lot of people tend to go a little bit crazy with the blur setting where the background blur where you can see that at the bottom of the screen some people go way too crazy and blur things to the point that it does not look natural like chill on the blur if you want to use the light focus it's never that serious you don't have to put it all the way at 10 okay so outside of the light focus there is the pro settings um, I don't use the pro settings that much but I think it's very important that you understand how the pro settings work just in case you find yourself in a situation where you need to use the pro settings uh, so what I would focus on learning is the ISO and the ISO is basically the sensitivity of the image sensor which sounds like it's just a whole bunch of hoopla but basically what it does is that it lets in light so the higher your ISO the more light is going to be allowed in which is great if you're trying to take a photo in a place where the lighting is not the best or it's a little bit too dim or a little bit too dark the ISO would be great for you to adjust a little bit so you can be able to let more light into the actual lens but here's the thing the higher the ISO the grainier the photo gets so if you take photos at night and you notice that it's very grainy it's just because you're trying to force so much light in that the photo can't be that crisp so the lower the ISO the crisper the photo the standard it basically almost acts like natural filters for you I generally don't like to use anything that has a filter I like my photos to be as raw as possible then you can be able to edit it after the fact then after that there is manual focus so the way I like to use manual focus is more for um, close-up things so let's say we're trying to focus on this remote if you click on manual focus what you can do is literally slowly start to adjust it until it focuses on the actual object and do you see that it's in focus so yeah now let's talk about the very simple basics on how to take photos by yourself so the first step to taking amazing photos by yourself outside of the equipment and all that stuff is knowing what works with your body that means clothing that means makeup and most importantly posing you need to know how to pose I'm not gonna be cocky about it but I am very comfortable with taking photos and I am very comfortable with posing I can pose anywhere and with that you need to know what works with you um, because of my face structure because of my bone structure I can do very strong ish poses like that works really well with my face and also because I don't have hair I can like elongate necks if I want to I can show some clavicles I mean if I lost some weight I can show some clavicles so that's how that's how I learned how to pose I'm very comfortable in front of the camera if you're not just like be practicing by yourself practice in front of a mirror um, check out people who you feel kind of sort of look like you and see the kind of photos that they take and then just try to practice that way not saying copy but just learn how to get comfortable with the posing aspect that way and you need to have an idea of what you want your final result to be what you want the final photo after editing after cropping what exactly or how exactly you want the photo to look like so i'm going to show you guys how i shot a couple of days ago in the morning and the process that i went through i already had a concept i already had an idea i just wanted to be me laying in bed in a gown and i just wanted it to look very beautiful that was it. I started off by setting up the camera. I placed the tripod on the edge of the bed, tried to lift it as high as possible, attached the camera, and pointed it down towards the bed, making sure I could get a small piece of the headboard and most of the bed, giving myself enough space to be able to crop if necessary. So this is the angle I'm going for. I'm keeping it on auto just cause I'm very okay with what this looks like, lighting wise and everything in between and then I shall fix everything else during the editing. Yeah. Now I just need my remote control. Oh, let's get this done. So after every five to 10 poses, go back and try to see what photos you've taken so far so you can try to figure out how well to adjust yourself. Towards the end, I realized that it looked a lot better when I laid on my back with my hands over my head. And this was the final result. 
Another trick when it comes to taking your own photos is not being afraid to move stuff around. Sometimes you have a vision of something and you literally have to just rearrange the room, rearrange fabric, rearrange some stuff just to make the shot work. So this is a perfect example of how I did that. So I took a photo in the living room on this couch and I wanted a shot where you could see me on the couch, you could see the ambiance that is the room, you could see the furniture, all that, but then I also wanted a little bit of greenery because I don't have enough plants in the living room itself. And this was the final result. Another hack when it comes to taking your own photos, if what you're trying to take is a little bit complicated, you need to learn how to use body doubles. Not actual human beings to be a body double, but finding objects that are maybe closer to your height and using that as a placement tool so that you know how to frame the shot. And then once you're finished doing that, you move the object out of the way and then you replace yourself in it. I know that sounds super complicated, but it really is not. I recently took a photo at Radisson Park Inn and I took a photo in the shower and I wanted the photo to be very specific. And this is how I used a tripod as my body double. I've decided that I wanna take the photo with my reflection on this mirror and then you just see the back of my body. So let me show you how I do that. Uh, number one, what you'll need is a prop that is relatively your height and you'll use that to represent you. Uh, for me, I happen to have an extra tripod, so that really helps. If that doesn't work, usually what I will do is um, carry, like find any stools, any tables, things like this, and like prop up um, a suitcase or anything that I have that can actually get to my height. And then that's what I'm gonna do. But since because I have the tripod, I'm gonna go the easy route. So what I am doing here is going back and forth between looking at what the screen on my camera is showing me and also going back to the tripod, adjusting it to where I need to make sure that I can see the reflection of the tripod on the small mirror and then making sure that when I go back to the camera, I can see that reflection perfectly because when you see the reflection of the tripod in the mirror on the camera that is representative of where my face is going to be okay set up now you move the tripod out of the way so what i'm doing is taking a couple of photos and then i go back to the camera to check out the results and if i notice that my face is not perfectly in the reflection of the small mirror i will keep adjusting the mirror until i notice that i'm in it was the final result. Now let's talk about shooting in public. Cause I know a lot of people don't know how I sometimes take my own photos when I am in a public space. Here's a little trick on how I do that. I just don't care. People will stare, people will look, people will be confused, people will not understand what you're doing, but you know what? They're not seeing your vision. So, I recently went to Alchemist uh, for lunch, and while I was there, I was just like, oh, hey, photo shoot. So let me show you the process on how I take photos by myself in public. So the first thing that you'll do when you get to that public space is walk around and try to check out what the area looks like. Try to see how many options, um, how many areas you can take photos in, what areas look best, what areas have the best lighting. So, uh, a couple of places that I have seen, are right there and I also love this area and then once you do that I take my actual phone I turn on the camera and I literally walk around just so I can see what my camera is seeing because that helps you decide what the final image is actually gonna look like another thing is don't get worried if you take a photo and you don't like what it looks like just keep trying different areas you will eventually find a spot that you love and that looks great in the photo Okay, change of plan. There are too many people on that side for now, so I want to shoot this other side. And again, like you can see, I tried out many areas, they just were not working out. 
So it's okay to keep changing your mind. I finally found two areas and you'll see where. <laughs> okay, change of plan. New location, new spot. Well, same location, which is Alchemist, but new spot. Plan B, which is getting a little bit of this wood and me sit it there. Let's see how that works out. And this was my final photo after trying out what felt like 17 different, okay, it was like two areas, but you know what I'm saying, it's a lot. So now let's talk about beauty shots and lighting. We're gonna do that at the exact same time. Um, I'm usually not the biggest fan of selfies, especially when you take a selfie with the front camera. Front camera is pretty good, but the back camera is the best. And also, if you are gonna take a photo with a front camera, my peoples, please, Stop using the face tune, face filter, that thing that blurs skin. It looks bizarre. I think you should leave them as is. And if you are going to put it, like maybe put it at a one or a two, never at the full like level. It's y'all. It's never that. Like stop blurring your lives. So, anyways, when I take beauty selfies, I always have to take them on this side of the camera. So either a, I will do it this way with my hand and just keep angling until I get it right. Or B, I will do it the same way that I'm gonna show you that I did at Alchemist when I got the chance to take a perfect beauty shot because the lighting was lit. So I've just set up my camera right there and the sun is directly over, it is hot, it is burning. So what I'm gonna do is I wanna take a picture here showing you how you can play with shadows and just work with it sometimes. You know what I'm saying? Okay, so this is my little setup. And I love the textures of the three, like with the door and the mabati and the wall and the little shadow from the wall piece. I'm into it. So let's take the photo and see what happens. talk about angles um, when it comes to basic photos for me I love my angles to always be low that's why a lot of people don't realize when they meet me that I'm actually 5'3 um, on my photos I look like I'm maybe 5'7 low angles make you look tall a big mistake that a lot of people do is that they try taking a photo the same level as them or the same height as them what happens is that it ends up distorting your body where your head and your shoulders look gigantic and your legs look itty bitty you don't want that you want your legs to look long and lean and fabulous moving up to your head and shoulders and you just look like a sexy gazelle it's a vibe everybody wants to be a sexy gazelle look at a sexy giraffe whatever you're just long and long and lanky long lanky and just looking fabulous but with that said, sometimes you can play with your angles, which is what I did later on that day when I decided I want to keep playing with that sun and wanted to do a high angle shot. And this was the final result. Now here's something else you can do when it comes to taking photos by yourself. Um, you will sometimes find yourself in a situation where you don't have a tripod, you don't have anywhere for you to be able to place the camera or the phone for it to be the perfect angle. What I will sometimes do, and I am super shameless about this, is if I see that there's somebody who's like bored, I will be like, oi, you're gonna help me take a photo? And nine times out of 10, they're gonna help you. Ha! And sometimes that's also just your friends. So I recently was at a pool party and before the pool party started, I was there with one of my friends called Dan and 
he was on his phone bored and I was just like, Oi, come here. You're gonna take a photo of me. Now, I am very particular about how I like my photos, so if I have another human being taking a photo of me, if they're not a photographer that I trust, what I will do is I will basically hold them, pull them to exactly where I want them to be, move their arms around like they are a tripod, and then just be like, you see this angle? Don't move. Just take it like this and press this button. Don't be creative, just press this button. Of course, I say it in a very polite way. This is a photo that I took with my friend Dan at the pool. And after 50 pictures and finally waiting for the clouds to clear, this was the final result. So there you go, those are my tricks and hacks on how I take my own photos, making me look like I have a photographer, but I don't. But I am my own photographer, so I do have a photographer. I'm just the same person who's also the model, and the editor, and the manager, and the student, and the professor. I do so much. Anyway, seriously guys, I really hope that that helped you guys out in any way, shape, or form. I will be also creating another video on how I edit my photos. That's just a whole video by itself because I use apps, I use softwares, I bounce around a lot. So I'm gonna work on that and try to figure out how I can shoot it for you guys. Cool? We good? Yay! Anyways, thank you guys for stopping by. See you guys next week.